Welcome to the Physician Use of MedMacro's Scribe MDM Materials with the EPIC EMR. What are MedMacro's Scribe MDM Augmentation Materials? Essentially, these are MDM templates that are based on age, discharge diagnosis, and disposition. So each template is highly specific to the individual patient case. At this time, we have approximately 2,700 templates. Some complaints are not amenable to MDM template use, and MDM med macro templates were not created for these complaints. Generally speaking, complaints such as URI or chest pain are highly amenable to the creation of med macros based on a highly binary de decision-making process. Again, they're only used for standard common ED diagnoses. They're evidence-based, core measure compliance, PQRS compliant, and essentially this allows the scribe to flesh out the standard medical decision-making for physicians, allowing for you to rapidly edit and complete the note, rather than starting from scratch, either using dragon or dictation or typing. So how exactly does this work? The scribe actually pulls the materials off medmacros.com based on the age, discharge, diagnosis, and disposition. The scribe follows explicit instructions on how to complete the medical decision-making based on the specific patient scenario. Remaining areas, with three stars are left for the physician to rapidly go through the note using F2 for most builds of EPIC. The scribe will also add three stars where a small part of the scenario does not fit or where they think that the physician needs to put additional input. So what exactly can you expect when using this? Essentially, Med Macros is able to work with any of the native EPIC documentation modalities be it note writer or individual note templates that the physicians themselves use. The MedMacros Scribe MDM templates are very much designed as an add-on to any previous templates or documentation system that you have in place. It is very obvious with the three stars what needs to be edited, and this, generally speaking, is a quite substantial time saver. Generally speaking, scribes are very helpful with the history of present illness, the emergency department course and discharge planning, but medical decision-making is often left lacking. This is a significant fix for that problem for the bulk of diagnoses in the emergency department. As I said, there's no scribe MDM documentation for complex or multiple diagnoses, so you will be stuck doing this. You can expect dramatic reduction in documentation times, even over and above the use of scribes. Generally speaking, on a busy shift, you can expect to save between an additional 15 to 20 minutes using the MedMacros MDM materials. There is the ability to customize these materials going forward and the scribes that you'll be using will be very adept at using these materials. As I stated, it's very simple, easy to edit and erase as needed. I would like to address some frequent concerns that I hear. Uh, first, uh, I will hear from time to time, I don't want to learn the templates. This is unfounded. Uh, the templates are quite simple to learn. They have similar language and similar setup, and particularly after the scribes got a hold of them, they are, they are pretty much common sense medical decision making for most complaints. Another concern, I'm starting scribes at the same time. Is this too much? Generally speaking, this is not the case. Learning to use a scribe is uh, a pretty fast process. It's very intuitive. And the addition of MDM materials on top of the note uh, does not change your flow substantially. This will be a huge time saver and I think is very much worth a small amount of effort learning the, the uh, MDM, Med Macros, template aspect of things in addition to the scribe simultaneously. This will save you a lot of time. Personally, this saves me probably between 15 minutes and a half hour per shift above and beyond the use of scribes. Another concern isn't this chart cloning. I would argue that it is not. We have 2,700 age diagnosis and disposition specific templates that are again further specified by the scribe based on the patient's individual scenario. Again, it's core measure compliant, PQRS compliant, and I have a tough time buying that the powers that be will come down on us for accurately documenting their required core measures in an organized fashion. Other question, do I have to use my macros if the rest of my group does? Obviously not. My general experience has been that the early adopters start using med macros and like the scribes, eventually everybody uses them because they are a very effective tool. Here's an example of the Scribe MDM templates in use. I have on the screen a general template uh, that was generated in an EPIC EMR. Uh, I understand that most groups have their own templates or use a different system, but this is just kind of a standard template. This is what you can expect with a Scribe note. Essentially, there's a fleshed out HPI, putting the 
cursor up on top. Simply striking F2 will bring you to the next area with three stars. Uh, it appears that this HPI is correct. I will simply delete this and I can scroll down or push F2 to get to the next area with three stars. This is just an example note on a playground, so there's no definite uh, uh, you know, lab results and orders filled in here. But as we scroll down to the clinical decision making or medical decision making, you can see that this is the MDM generated material, this is part of the medic, med macros generated materials, including the differential diagnosis and the general admit note for a chest pain rule out. Again, all of our materials are specified to your group, depending on your practice. If you have a chest pain uh, observation unit in the emergency department, these notes are adapted to that. But as you can see, the materials here are pretty general and uh, basically the common sense thought process uh, that we have on these patients. I'll read this to you. The patient's symptoms and or chest pain are sufficiently worrisome for cardiac associated symptoms to warrant admission for serial cardiac enzymes and EKGs as deemed necessary. The patient's initial cardiac enzyme testing was negative and the patient's EKG showed no diagnostic acute ischemic changes. The patient's chest x-ray was within normal limits, making significant pneumothorax, pneumonia, lung abscess, or aortic pathology much less likely. The patient's EKG does not show changes consistent with pericarditis or other malignant underlying process. The patient's symptomatology and physical exam are not completely consistent with myocarditis, costochondritis, pleurisy, aortic pathology, or pulmonary embolus. The patient was administered aspirin in the emergency department upon arrival, and you can see that there are three stars here. So the scribe is drawing your attention to this for some reason. Uh, maybe they don't know exactly where the aspirin was given or they missed this part of the visit. Uh, simply hit F2, and this can be deleted uh, or modified as needed. The patient was hemodynamically stable throughout the course of the emergency department. The patient was chest pain free prior to admission with the above interventions, and the patient is appropriate for admission on telemetry. Now, it should be noted that the scribe version has extensive parenthetical instructions uh, by all these materials so that they know how to modify this based on the patient's course. Um, also, as I mentioned, the three start areas will be used to draw your attention to any area that is not uh, filled out completely or that requires your specific input. Here's another example of a simple complaint. In this case, a, an asthma exacerbation in the setting of a likely upper respiratory tract infection. Again, the differential diagnosis is generated here. And some general thought process. In this case, no chest x-ray was obtained and uh, the chest x-ray uh, aspect of the note was erased by the scribe. But you can see the general process is uh, very straightforward and simple with these notes. And last, here's an example of uh, back pain again with the differential diagnosis and the clinical decision making. It should be noted that the scribes will generate the differential diagnosis based on the chief complaint, and this can easily be modified by the physician. And then obviously the MDM is based on the age, diagnosis, and disposition. Again, the scribes will be trained to go through these notes, and they have uh, extensive instructions on how to modify these so that they fit the patient's scenario. I do want to be clear that there is a subsegment of ER docs that may not uh, be able to use med macros and are not amenable to using med macros. Generally speaking, this is a smaller group, and uh, after the early adopters, the bulk of, of people tend to uh, adopt the use of med macros. Some people who have problems will be, be those who have difficulty uh, allowing some of the stylistic uh, issues to slide. Uh, some of us are more particular than others. Uh, generally speaking, those who try to give it a legitimate shot, especially with the use of scribes, find that it's quite helpful and a time saver. Uh, please feel free to contact me directly uh, at uh, you know, kkingsley at clinicalscribes.com or, uh, or med uh, medmacros.com to, uh, if you need any more information. Uh, thanks again for your time, and I hope that this video was helpful. Please feel free to contact me with any questions.